The U.S. moon program continues, 50 months after the catastrophe. Von Braun's Saturn launch vehicle, which has now made several unmanned test flights without problems, is now said to propel a manned Apollo capsule into space for the very first time. Human beings are going to leave the gravitational field of the Earth, something that has never happened before. On the 21st of December 1968, the massive Saturn V rocket stands on the launch pad at Cape Kennedy, 110 meters high and weighing 3,000 tons. I think that anybody who comes, walks up to a Saturn V and, and looks at it and, uh, and looks at the engines themselves and the huge tanks often wonder how this will ever get off the ground. It, of course, produced about a million and a half pounds more thrust than our present-day shuttle. Uh, it burned fuel at the rate of 15 tons per second. Uh, a tremendous monument to the technology of that day and still to this day. After eight years of Apollo development, we felt like gods. When the first Saturn V rocket rose into the air, 110 meters, a tower of aluminium, packed with the power of a small nuclear bomb. It worked like clockwork, made you feel, as I said, like a god. But then, when you faced the reality of outer space, you suddenly felt really humble again. For the first time, human beings leave Earth's gravity behind. For the first time, they hurtle through space at a speed of 40,000 kilometers an hour. James Lovell in his Apollo 8 spacecraft on the way to the moon. Nothing impresses the astronauts more than the sight of the Earth getting smaller as the spacecraft speeds away from it. You can put your thumb up to the window and completely hide the Earth behind your, behind your thumb. Everything that you ever knew is behind your thumb. Your loved ones are back there, your country, the world itself is completely hidden behind your thumb. So you realize suddenly how fortunate we are. We're on a small planet that could be completely hidden behind your thumb only 240,000 miles away. On Christmas Eve 1968, the Apollo 8 crew reached lunar orbit. The moon is tantalizingly close, but the lunar module is not yet ready. The mission climaxes with a kind of Bible class from the moon. The astronauts recite passages from Genesis. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters, and God said, Let there be light, and there was light. And God saw the light. It was good, and God divided the light from the darkness. Apollo 8 throws the gates wide open for a moon landing. Von Braun is still on schedule, almost on the home straight. His baby works perfectly. The question lots of people ask is how could this man get his people to perform like that for so many years, not just in Peenemunde, but also later in Huntsville? The answer is charisma. His management style was not like what's practiced today. It was more patriarchal. He didn't see work as an end in itself. He saw the work he did as part of his vision. You have a dream and you pursue it, and you don't care how much work it takes to realize it. And it probably doesn't do you any harm. That's what I always admired about him, that he had a dream at the age of 18 or 15 or whatever, and he made it come true. Actually, he didn't have such a bad life. Fate can be crueler than that. Frozen Flashes. A German film screened on East German television in 1969. It shows a different von Braun. Not the guileless conqueror of space, more the unscrupulous opportunist doing deals with Himmler and the SS for the sake of his obsession. But von Braun doesn't always get a good press in the United States either. Despite the Apollo 8 triumph, 
there's still a rumble of critical comment about his past. In 1969, on his Sauerkraut Mountain, von Braun has more pressing things on his mind than the time in the Third Reich. The moon landing mission is entering the crucial phase. Everything else has to come second, family and also the past. In July, Apollo 11 is poised for victory in the race to the moon. But what are the Soviets doing? Twice they've stolen the show from von Braun. The cover of Time magazine indicates the question that's uppermost in every insider's mind. Might the Russians still win the moon race? The Soviet N-1 rocket on the launch pad at Baikonur, Nur, the Russian counterpart of America's Saturn V carrier vehicle. Nearly as powerful as von Braun's rocket, but not as reliable. The first launch attempt in February 1969 failed. Now, 14 days before the much-publicized Apollo 11 launch in America, the Soviets stage a second attempt. Which also fails. The Soviet moon landing program is effectively finished. In the race to the moon, the Americans seem assured of victory. However, von Braun still has work to do on his moon rocket. The race against the Russians turns into a race against the clock. The end of the decade draws nigh. Kennedy's deadline creeps ever closer. Then, on the 16th of July, 1969, von Braun's super booster is ready for the historic flight to the moon. Transmission worldwide. The countdown, which has already been running for six days, enters the crucial phase. More than 5,000 technicians and engineers are involved in the launch preparations alone. Only seconds to go before liftoff. The atmosphere is electric. We were on tenterhooks and also suffering from the heat. It was summer. Then Vanna appeared and he was beaming, totally relaxed and cool as a cucumber. He was wearing a suit while everyone else was in short sleeves. He was immaculately turned out. This was his day. 20 seconds and counting. He'd worked for decades for this day and it had finally arrived. Forty seconds away from the Apollo 11 liftoff. All Another of those crucial countdowns. Go with Apollo 11. Thirty seconds and counting. Astronauts report it feels good. Fifteen seconds. Guidance is internal. Twelve. Eleven. Ten. Nine. Ignition sequence start. Six. The voyage to the moon begins. The three million kilo moon rocket rises into the air centimeter by centimeter. 102 hours from now, if all goes well, the first human beings will set foot on another celestial body. A perfect launch. But memories of the Apollo 1 tragedy are and no one can say for sure that the millions of parts that have gone into the Saturn V rocket will really work as they should. Even the notoriously optimistic von Braun and his team are well aware of the risks of this mission. There are so many things that can go wrong. A small transistor might fail, for example, and put the whole guidance system out of action. You really need luck. Bismarck said that fortune smiles only on the proficient, and there's certainly some truth in that. But from where we stand, from the vantage of the technician, being proficient means carrying out every single step as carefully and conscientiously and precisely as possible.